Okay, so we've done one simple way of um, filling up an integer array or any array is just kind of declare it. It's five, five oranges in the bag, and here's each one. And then we print them out. We can get a little bit more sophisticated than this. Um, let's just show you one sophisticated way of doing this. So, first of all, we'll get rid of this. It's not really good to, to have bad stuff hanging around. So let's get rid of that bad stuff. Now the next thing we could do is if we know what's in the array, we can do this instead. So I'll set up a second uh, integer array. This time you'll notice I'm not declaring how big it is. Why not? Because I'm immediately telling C++ what's in it. And C++ is clever enough to go, aha, you've got five elements. It must be an array with five things in it, so you don't need to tell me how big it is. So that's that's pretty handy. And then we can, we'll just test that's working by, uh, by printing it again. We'll, we'll, we'll whiz around a little loop again like this. Just to see what's going on. Let, let's do what I would normally do in a program. I'd normally have I there. So we're going for the second array this time. Position I, so array two. Position I looks all right to me so far. Let's have a quick whiz. A little look. There we are. So that's, that seems to be working fine. Another way you could fill an array is programmatically. So let's, um, let's create another array. Let's copy this code and hack it about a bit. Okay, so we have a third array. We don't quite know what's going to be in there, so we need to say how big it is. Um, this time though, we're going to fill it programmatically. Let's get rid of this. We'll say, okay, at position i, set that equal to some programmatic value, so I'll have 3000 plus i. And then we can check that that's working later in, in a... We could either do it right there, but let's, let's do it in another full loop. And print it out. So let's use one of these statements. So, third array. So we've, we, we declared it with a hard-coded size. We then filled the array programmatically. We whizzed around the loop five times until we'd filled it. And this time we're going around another loop, a separate loop, and printing out the values. And that looks great as well. Now, I think we've probably just got time to do array... Um, multi-dimensional arrays. So let's have a look at a couple of multi-dimensional arrays. Let's copy this again to uh, save a bit of typing. Copy and paste. Okay, now I'm going to go for my fourth array, but this time it's going to be a two-dimensional array. And this is going to be useful later, much later, when we start pricing call and put options and we start building up all sorts of uh, two-dimensional things, even three. We could even go three dimensions. Let's just stick to two for the moment. First of all, we'll set... Let's just get rid of this so that we don't confuse ourselves. Here's an outer loop, which is going to go around five times. And we're going to have an inner loop, which is going to go around four times. Actually, it might be, let's just hard code this stuff so it's clear. We're going to go around five times. And then in the second one, we, I typically have J there. I'm going to go around four times. So, sorry, J is less than four. Um, J plus plus. And then I'm going to set A int... 
position I for the first dimension, the x-axis, and then position J for the y-axis, the second dimension, equals some number. Um, oh, by the way, when we do this, we are going to have to declare this because we don't know what's coming immediately after. So we have to kind of tell CC, set up a block of memory, which has five elements on the next axis and four elements on the y-axis. So set up 20 little bits of memory. Um, let me create a test number. And then I'll set, set it to 100. And then I'll just put test number into the array and then add one on each time. And again, let's, let's retype this so we know what we're doing. Once we've filled that multi-dimensional array, two-dimensional array, let's set up another two-dimensional system to print out the answer. So we'll try and do this on one line. So just what we'll do is we'll output a int 4, position i, position j, and we'll put a space. That will be it. And then every time we move to the, to the next dimension, we'll have a new line. This might make more sense when we see the finished output. So we declare a two-dimensional array there. Five blocks on the x-axis, four blocks on the y-axis. We set up some spurious test number, don't worry too much about what that is. We then go into a for loop, goes from one to five, then immediately into an inner loop, one to four, zero to four, sorry, actually zero to three. Then we put a value into the array, multi-dimensional array, a position i, j, which in the first position will be zero, zero, then zero, one, then zero two, then zero three, and then it'll be one zero, one one, one two, etc. Then we do a second loop system to print out these values. What's wrong with this? Oh, there we are. Let's give it a whiz. There you go, a two dimensional array. You can see we start at the test value of 100 and every time we go up, we add one on and then we go to the next X y1, y2, y3, y4, x3, y1, y2, y3, y4, x4, y1, y2, y3, y4, x5, y1, y2, y3, y4. Why four? Why not? Oh, so many jokes. Um, we have time for anything else? Now, you might even, this is all a bit confusing. How about this then? How about we do something like this? Let's set up another array. But this time, multi-dimensional array, but this time we'll kind of set it immediately as to what it is and we'll, we'll set it up in such a way we can actually see what's going on. So that's the array setup, but that's the, an array within an array. With four elements in it. And position X2. Etc, etc. So what that's doing there. Oh, yeah, I need to change that to a brace. It's a brace rather than a square bracket. Use the square brackets to declare, use the braces to actually run a bit of code. So let me just change, that's going to be three, four, five. You talk amongst yourselves while I'm <laughs> having fun doing this. There's an easy, must be an easier way to do this, but I don't know what it is. Three, four, five, and then three, four, five. And then we got a very a good visual clue as to uh, what's going on here, which is, which is handy. So we can see 
you know, we can see what our array looks like. It's a, it's a two-dimensional array, and, and there's all the elements in the array. Let's print that out now. I'll need another one of these. So, oh, semicolon. And this time we're going to go for int 5. And now we should print out this block, and it should look like that block the way we've drawn. That can be a very handy thing to do. You, you think of map, mapping out FX options prices or over time, date, periods, or whatever. Okay, let's uh, let's run rock and roll. Build failed. Unidentified size five. Oh, sorry. Size five. Size four. Cool. Hoist by my own petard there. Build failed. Size four. Size four. Oh, I haven't set up a size four, have I? Let's set up a size four. const int size 4 equals 4 fingers got, got my fingers crossed Whee! there we are there's the array now see it matches matches the setup there there we go loop within a loop multi-dimensional array that's the earlier one of course that's the one that's the one that we set up uh, here programmatically on this line here using this test number, which we can again see there. And then, we, then we're adding on one each time to it to get these numbers here. OK, I think we've probably done enough now with integer arrays. I think it's probably time on to now move to characters and strings. So I'll see you next time.